Hi, in my previous video about getting electrocuted in a bathtub, I briefly mentioned suicide showers, which is what people call them because you have to bring live wires with you in the bathroom to heat the water. But then there were tons of comments, mostly from my beloved Brazilian viewers that were shocked by my comments, <laughs> shocked, saying that millions of people there use this shower head with no problems. There was this outpour of people in the streets demanding my exile. Just kidding, but seriously, it seems like a majority of people there as well as some other countries like Mexico use these shower heads and people seem to be okay. I didn't want to make this video because Big Clive and Diodes Gone Wild have already made good videos on the topic and me being a bigger channel, my video would probably pop first, pushing their videos down, getting more views. Okay, let's do it. But I'll pick a different title so that our videos won't show in the same search. So I bought one of these from Amazon to try and see if I survive. Since you can buy these in Canada, you would assume that it's tested and safe. I'm starting to doubt our system. Let's see what's inside the suicide shower and if it is truly suicidal. Okay, so here we have two bare heating elements for two heat settings that are completely exposed to the running water without isolation. There is a diaphragm back here that when there is pressure from running water, it switches the contacts on to make sure the elements are only powered when there is running water, otherwise the whole thing would melt and burn in fire. The damn thing draws 50 amps max. The ground wire goes in the middle of the diaphragm to ground the water at the output and also goes straight into the input water to ground the input as well. Now the question is, would this be enough to ensure the water pouring on your head is not equivalent to live wire and electrocute your brain cells? The structure of this shower is kind of smart, I don't know if it's the same case for all of them, but the entire water passing over the live wires must go through this hole first before getting out, where the ground wire is sitting at the middle. So it might be possible for the ground wire to remove all the charges from the water before getting out. Now I'm not saying it's impossible to have a safe water heater with you in the shower. It's actually pretty simple to make. See if the heating element is isolated from live wires like these oven elements then there is no problem. If I turn it on and touch the element there is no electricity on the surface just heat. These run on 240 volt AC and are safe to touch. Let me remove it. Now if I turn it on I read 204 volts. Oh right, because at my home the voltage is made from the difference between 220 volt AC phases 120 degrees apart. Now if I change the volume, the voltage should change. It's not changing. Oh, maybe it's doing some special waveform modulation like PWM or a light dimmer and my meter is not detecting it well. So I brought my scope here to check the actual waveform using my differential probe because I don't want to accidentally short the probe ground to 200 volt AC. Oh wait, just remembered something. Circuit specialist sent me a new tool that could be pretty helpful here. There, they sent me a handheld oscilloscope. This is a 70 MHz two-channel oscilloscope with its own 25 MHz function generator and a complete digital multimeter. I mean, if it works well, it will make life much easier for some measurements. It runs on battery or isolated USB power, so it would be completely isolated from live wires. And it's much more portable. I'll continue using it throughout the video to check its performance. I mean, for around 200 volt AC, I mean, $200, it's pretty affordable. And I'll give away 10 of them at the end of the video. Checking the voltage first. Yep. The screen is pretty adequate for a multimeter, but the voltage still doesn't change by the volume. It comes with one probe, but fortunately I have more. Okay, let's check the voltage. There you go. Well, the display is a bit small for a scope, but I mean it's a handheld scope and it is still pretty clear. But the voltage still doesn't change by the volume. Or maybe I have to load it with the element so the proper waveform shows up. I tied some wires to the element terminal so I can probe them. Now if I turn on the voltage... <laughs> Let me use some electric tape. Damn it! Now the oven doesn't turn off. Have to figure out what's going on. Maybe it's a stuck relay. There is not much going on here. Maybe this switch is stuck or something. Okay, so this contact was welded to the one below. But they are disconnected now. You know? 
probing stuff, you have to be more careful. Well, I did find some leads and garbage thrown back here. Okay, back in business. Hopefully nothing gets shorted again. Just note that there is no ground between these two wires. Each one is one phase. Both dangerous. There we go. The hell? The voltage still doesn't change. How does it adjust the temperature? Oh, turned off. Oh, sh Such an idiot. Yep, I'm an idiot. You work with fancy PWM control systems to drive loads and motors so much you forget stupid stuff like this oven work in simple ways. This thing is just one minute on, one minute off, one minute on, one minute off, and the on off duration is controlled by this knob. Was it calling it a volume all this time? I'm not recording all that shit. Again. The point is, this shower head could also be made of such an isolated heating element with proper electronics to more precisely control the heat. Let's go install it. I don't have a power outlet right here, unlike what it shows in the installation sheet, which is good. I mean, you don't want live wire with you in the bathtub, but I guess it's okay in some countries. Survivor of the fittest. But this length of wire is not enough anyway. Okay, so I wired everything up and plugged in my power into the GFCI outlet to prevent me from death. Let's turn it on. Oh, I was expecting the GFCI to pop. So I connected my amp meter in series with the ground wire to see how much current is going through the ground and it's a little bit less than 0.8 milliamps, which is not a lot. It is still good enough to give you a little bit of shock, but it's much less than the 5 milliamp limit that the GFCI trips at. This amount of current depends on the quality of water and the voltage. So if you're in a country with 240 volt AC and more impure water, this current might be too much that will trip GFCI. For example, the tap hot water is more conductive and if I I make it more you see that the ground wire current is rising I've heard in some countries they disconnect the ground wire to make this work and that makes this much more dangerous the room breaker popped how much current is it drawing I set it to minimum and the breaker still popped let's measure the current another tool from circuit specialists it's 19 amps so if you want to fully use this, not only you have to make sure you have at least a 50 amp breaker, you have to make sure the house wiring is rated for 50 amps, otherwise you will set the whole thing on fire. Now I'm going to measure the AC voltage between the water, which I'll probe with a spoon, to the faucet, which is my ground. And if I probe from far, you see that there is no AC voltage because the water droplets are disconnected. But if I get close, I read as high as 7 volt AC. I can smell wires burning now. So the voltage is not high enough to give you a shock over your skin, but if it goes into your eyes or mouth, it could really hurt. Okay, let's try it. I put one foot on the drain as ground and bring my tongue as close as possible. Yeah, I feel nothing. Okay, so although there is voltage, there might be a very high resistance series with it so that when you get in the way, that voltage drops to zero. Okay, let's measure the AC voltage again, but this time, I'll put my body parallel to it to see what happens to the voltage. See, from around 5 volts, when I touch it, it drops to like 0.7 volts. So this confirms that in my setup, this water cannot supply high voltage or current to shock you. So, I hate to say it, but beside these loose wires and the fact that it may set your house on fire, it seems pretty safe. But I mean, this is left to people to install and you know people, they may not connect the ground properly. Let's see what happens in that case. Now I disconnected the ground wire and if I probe the water, I get close to, oh, 45 volts. <laughs> now if I touch the spoon, the voltage drops to around 2 volts. It could still hurt if it gets into your mouth. Nope. <laughs> well, still nothing, which is good, I guess. So if this is installed absolutely correctly by a professional and it never fails considering its questionable quality, then you might be safe knowing that there is a little bit of current constantly running through you when you are taking a shower. That tiny current draw would be double or more in countries with 240 volt AC, which might still be safe. On the other hand, the current draw from the power lines would be half, so it's safer that way.
Maybe it won't give you a shock. Maybe you won't accidentally touch the hanging loose wires or set your home on fire or get cancer over time. All I know is that this thing actually proved itself to be quite useful and I'll give away 10 of these. Give away time! Well, I already said it. Thanks to circuit specialists, I'll give away 5 of these to my patrons at patreon.com who are always in the draw and 5 more to the viewers who can register for free from the link in the description. Sometimes things I give away are too expensive, but this thing at around $200 is all the essential things you need for electronics. Except it's not a soldering iron, is it? No disappointed. And circuit specialist is like a treasure box of all this good equipment. I have tons of things from them here. And if you use the promo code electroboom at checkout, you get 10% off. So do electronics.